President Mohamed Buhari presents 2020-2021 budget proposal to the National Assembly. National Assembly reacts to the budget. Plus, correspondent examines the impact of the new package for teachers on the education sector. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Panorama coming to you from the NTA Enugu Network. by the government for its services in the 2021 fiscal year. The budget is expected to, among other things, accelerate the pace of the nation's economic recovery and diversification, enhance competitiveness, as well as ensure social inclusion. President Mohamed Buhari presented the appropriations bill before the joint session of the National Assembly for consideration. He thanked Nigerians for their perseverance and continued support during those difficult times, saying, however, that his administration will remain unwavering in its commitment towards achieving a brighter future for everyone. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports. The 2021 budget presentation is coming barely two days after the joint executive and legislative retreat in Abuja, where participants resolved to sustain their genuine collaborative efforts at enhancing good governance and effective service delivery to Nigerians. The ambience here clearly indicates unity of purpose as well as avowed commitment by all to accelerate the pace of national development. The 13.08 trillion naira budget proposal is designed to further deliver on the goals of the Economic Sustainability Plan, which provides a clear roadmap for Nigeria's post-COVID-19 economic recovery as a transitional plan from the ERGP to the proposed 2021 to 2025 medium-term national development plan. The budget is made up of 5.65 trillion naira recurrent expenditure, 3.12 trillion naira debt service, as well as 3.85 trillion naira for capital projects, which is 1.05 trillion naira higher than the 2020 provision of 2.69 trillion naira. Capital expenditure in 2021 remains focused on the completion of as many ongoing projects as possible. We have also made efforts to ensure equity in the distribution of projects and programs in the proposed budget. I will be providing the National Assembly a list of some of the most critical projects which we must work collectively to ensure they receive adequate funding. Until projects reach completion, they do not deliver the dividends of democracy that Nigerians rightly deserve. Works and Housing Ministry received the highest capital allocation of 404 billion naira, 256 billion naira for transportation, and 190 billion naira for the power sector. The 2021 budget is predicated on a benchmark oil price of $40 per barrel, a daily oil production estimate of 1.86 million barrels, an exchange rate of 379 naira to a dollar, 3% GDP growth, as well as an inflation closing at 11.95%. In view of many challenges confronting us, we must accelerate our economic recovery process promote social inclusion, and strengthen the resilience of the economy. I have directed the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planner to finalize the Finance Bill 2020, which will be forwarded for your kind consideration and passage into law. The Finance Bill is to support the realization of our 2021 revenue projections, adopt appropriate counter cyclical fiscal policies, and enhance the efficiency of fiscal incentives. 
As the government proposes, the budget is to be funded by 7.86 trillion naira oil and non-oil revenues, as well as grants and aids, while a deficit of 5.2 trillion naira will be financed mainly by new borrowings, privatization processes, and drawdowns on multilateral and bilateral loans secured for specific projects and programs. Let me emphasize that revenue generation remains our major challenge. Nevertheless, government is determined to tackle the persistent problems with domestic resource mobilization, as there is a limit to deficit financing through borrowing. The time has come for us to maintain a healthy balance between meeting our growing expenditure commitments and our long-term public financial health. President Muhammad Buhari noted with pride that progress has been made on several fronts with key policies, programs and projects in critical priority areas delivered by government. The 2021 budget was prepared amid a challenging global and domestic environment due to the persistent headwinds from the coronavirus pandemic. However, we are working assiduously to ensure a rapid recovery in 2021. It is my sincere hope that the National Assembly will pass this bill into law early enough to enable implementation by 1st January 2021. And to enhance good governance, the president said the nation's anti-corruption agencies have been strengthened to perform more effectively while emergent cases of insecurity and insurgency are being addressed with innovative approaches towards ridding the country of bandits, kidnappers, and criminal behavior. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The National Assembly has pledged expeditious consideration and passage of the 2021 Appropriation Bill of 13.08 trillion Naira presented to a joint session of the National Assembly by President Muhammad Buhari. It is in tandem with the commitment of ensuring continuity of the January to December budget cycle. National, Cor National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the laying of the document is in fulfillment of constitutional provisions. The leadership of the bicameral legislature in keeping with the resolve of partnership and cooperation with the executive in the Economic Sustainability and Growth Plan, Diversification and Social Inclusion considered the budget as critical. It's noted and commended the proactive sense of the federal government in the fiscal estimate which took into cognizance the economic and other indices due to the coronavirus. The to achieve dreams equal to their effort and commitment. The president, during the presentation of the budget estimates, appreciated the harmonious relationship between the two arms of government. The second reading of the 2021 appropriation bill is slated for next week to pave way for MDAs to appear before relevant committees for budget defense. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Andamu, has ordered the restriction of vehicular movement from 11.59 p.m. on Friday, 9th of October, 2020, in Ondo State. A statement by the force indicates that the order is part of efforts to ensure effective coordination of public order and safety during the gubernatorial election. The IGP reiterates that the vehicular restriction order, among other things, is aimed at preventing political actors and troublemakers from freely engaging in unpatriotic acts, circulation and use of illicit arms and hard drugs, movement of political talks from different states to Ondo State. The IGP calls on residents of the Sunshine State to go out on the day of the election and exercise their franchise. 
He assures that adequate security and arrangement has been put in place to secure the public space for the election. The IGP, however, warns that anybody who engages in snatching of ballot boxes, vote buying, vote selling, hate speeches, and any other act capable of comp compromising the integrity of the electoral process will be dealt with according to the law. Consistent with the Enugu State Government's policy in upgrading public infrastructure and providing conducive working environment for workers, the Enugu State Governor, Ifani Uguani, has performed the groundbreaking ceremony of a new office complex at the State House of Assembly premises. Susan Eze reports that the auxiliary building to the main complex is said to be the administrative block. It's composed of two floors, totally, the two floors has 29 offices with a defeating conference room for the Honorable Speaker. The building described by the State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Greg Naji, is to provide adequate office accommodation for the 24 legislators and other support staff of the Assembly. The aim, Governor Gwani said, is to motivate the legislators and other staff to greater efficiency in the delivery of their mandates. Strategic role in optimizing service delivery and good governance in our state is self-evident. Importantly, we are blessed with a responsive and responsible legislator. Speaker of the House, on behalf of other legislators, thanked the state executive for being responsive to the needs of the legislature and appreciated the harmony between the three arms of government in the state promising that the legislature is ever ready to sustain the cordial relationship. Well, where do I start to thank you, Your Excellency? The Hallow Chambers is well furnished. The development is non conducive. The construction of the auxiliary building is in addition to other renovation works aimed at lifting the face of the Enugu State Assembly complex. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NT. In a bid to curb the spate of insecurity and banditry across the country, especially in the rural areas, the Vigilante Group of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter, has conducted its annual marching exercise. The leaders of the group in Enugu said that the exercise was geared towards strengthening the efforts of their members in the surveillance and tackling of insecurity at the grassroots. Eva Aneke has the details. The group, which drawn its members from the 17 local government areas of the state, converged in the metropolis to register their commitment towards improving security in the grassroots. Speaking on the theme, Road March for Survival, the deputy commandant in charge of operations in the southeast zone, Pastor Mike Onuchuku said, the group since its inception has played vital roles in the war against criminality and banditry in the rural areas, having a common synergy with the security agency. Commending the diligence and selflessness of the group, the Deputy State Commandant, Simon Oji said, the organization has shown readiness in eradicating crime by coming out in numbers to participate in the exercise. Despite the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic, and appealed to government at all levels to expedite action to constitutionally empower the Nigerian vigilante for maximum output, especially now the country is facing security challenges. Uh, the third group of Nigeria in eradicating crime and criminality is uh, very, very obvious because it is a grassroots based uh, security organization operating in, uh, uh, in conjunction with uh, other security agencies. The group seeks the partnership and support from the public to improve the security of lives and property in the country. In Enugu, Eva, Aneke, and TA News. With the commitment of Enugu State Government towards boosting the standard of education in the state, it is expected that the new salary structure and extension of services for teachers when implemented will no doubt encourage and improve teaching and learning in public schools. These were the submissions of educationists in Enugu as the World Day for Decent Work is marked. Comfort IM reports. This year, the global focus on World Day for Decent Work celebrated on October 7 each year 
introduced by the International Labour Office, ILO, in 1999, is on the world's struggle for living, maximum wages and pay rise for all workers. A day every trade union across the globe mobilizes and millions raise awareness on workers' rights. In Enugu, however, the people also took advantage of the event to review the working environment of workers and journey so far, especially on challenges confronting the teachers. Because of the harsh economic environment already thrown up by the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide and its effect on the economy of the uh, country and the state. Commending efforts of the state government towards renovating and boosting standard of education in primary and post-primary schools, the workers have also called for an extension of such move to other public schools in dilapidated state. They reminded the school authorities of the affected schools to write to the Universal Education Board for action. There are still uh, some areas where we have some loopholes which need to be plugged. The World Day for Decent Work 2020 coming at this time when the teachers are jubilating over the new salary structure and extension of service year as introduced by the federal government described as a good sign when implemented. They maintained will encourage and attract the unemployed youth to go back to teaching profession. In Enugu Comfort, I am NTN News. We'll take a break here. Panorama continues in a moment. Do stay. Thank you for staying on. There is a popular saying that if you can write your name, you should thank your teacher. Teachers are seen as torch bearers who sacrifice a lot in nurturing future generation of leaders, professionals, administrators, they, however, show that teachers have, poorly, have been poorly remunerated, and this affects them and their output. However, respite seems to be coming their way with the new package recently approved by President Buhari. In this report, our correspondent examines what could be the impact of this new package on the teachers, teaching, and the uh, education sector. Nigerian teachers, no doubt, have contributed so much to nation building and the development of the education sector. But most times, these teachers usually feel that they are not being encouraged with a remuneration and welfare commensurate with the sacrifices they make, and they are often made to believe that a teacher's reward is in heaven. However, the present administration in the country wants to change this narrative, as it believes that a teacher should start receiving rewards while on earth. As a special gift to teachers, President Muhammad Buhari in this year's World Teachers Day announced a new special package for teachers. The new national teaching policy, as signed and approved by President Buhari, includes the establishment of a special salary scale, the extension in retirement age of teachers from 60 to 65 years, and length in service years from 35 to 40. Automatic admission and tuition for kids of teachers at their place of work, as well as establishment of a special pension scheme. Others include automatic recruitment of Bachelor of Education graduating students, as well as other allowances. How do teachers and other stakeholders in the education sector in Enugu State feel about this special package, and what can it do for them? At 35 years, you are a bundle of experience. That is where your service will be more impactful. You understand, because just they said, experience is the best teacher. So, having we received this news with delight? Good omen for the education industry, actually, because uh, it will uh, assist us to tap fully the resources of our teachers who have cognitive experience. Teachers are ready to put in their best to make sure that uh, the, the president is not disappointed. What then are they advocating? It is our, our hope that the policy declaration is implemented. I am sure that Mr. President will liaise with all the governors to be on the same page. Among other things approved by the President were the building of low-cost houses for teachers in rural areas and for the Tertiary Education Trust Fund to make financial provisions for teaching practice in universities and colleges of education. It is hoped 
that these gestures from the president will spur teachers to continue to exhibit unmatched resilience, perseverance, and selflessness in the discharge of their duties. Our focus on Panorama today is the impact of the new special package announced by President Buhari for the teachers. And with me in the studio to talk on this is the Chairman, Nigeria Union of Teachers, Enugu State, Mr. Teofilos Mweke Odu. Sir, you're welcome to Panorama. Thank you very much. Good day, listeners okay, sir. and viewers. Okay, sir. Sir, when you heard that announcement of a new salary structure, how did you feel? Uh, actually, uh, when the Minister of Education made that announcement on behalf of the President. Uh, teachers, personally, I received it with much uh, happiness and jubilation because we have been expecting that so that our teachers will be encouraged to work more in their fields. Okay, so before now, before that announcement, what was the condition of teachers? Uh, actually, I want to be frank about it. The pay package of teachers has not been commensurate with what uh, uh, their input, what they have been doing, because we know very well that uh, these teachers are nation builders and uh, they participate so much in human development. So it was has not been commensurate with their pay has not been commensurate with uh, what they are being paid with their, their work anyway. But uh, thank God uh, in Enugu State here. The residences have approved minimum wage, and uh, our teachers were beneficiaries to that. Though the primary school teachers are not benefited, but those of them in the secondary school are already benefiting, and uh, there was an uh, improvement. And that was why the, we led the teachers to pay so that visit to his excellency, at least to thank him for that uh, magnanimity. Okay, so what would be the impact of this new uh, national teachers' policy on the teacher? Uh, definitely, we say that uh, the teaching condition of the teacher is the learning condition of the child. When the teacher is happy, he can now deliver appropriately. And uh, that will go a long way to affecting teaching and learning in our classrooms. Uh, so it will, affect, uh, it will uh, actually spur them to work harder okay. because it's a very good encouragement to them. Okay. So in terms of uh, implementation of these policies, do you see states queuing into this uh, policy? It is our hope that uh, because this is a federal uh, order or federal directive, uh, every state or every local government, at every, all government at every level, we key up to that. Because we equally believe that uh, Mr. President will improve the allocation he's giving to our states okay. so that he can help them to implement this policy. Okay, sir. So yeah. please let's leave it here for now. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on Panorama. Thank you. I'll be speaking with Mr. Teofilos Mweke Odo, the chairman, Nigerian Union of Teachers, Enugu State. And sports is next.